Welcome to Structuring Effective Cross-Functional SRE Teams. My name is Payam. A little bit about me. I was born and raised in the DC area. I'm an Iranian American. I'm a martial artist and I'm a nerd. And I'm a builder of tech and a builder of companies. I got to be one of the foundational leaders of a company called Dealeron, which is a su successful uh, digital marketing company. I've worked across product, platform, and reliability. I've had the privilege of working for mission-driven organizations. And most recently at the New York Times and Bees, uh, I built the SRE and platform teams and launched their internal developer platforms. But the biggest reason for why you should listen to me is because I love this space. It's an amazing blend of people, process, and technology. And I've seen how SRE and platform engineering done properly can transform entire companies in short periods of time. Before we get too deep, I want to talk about some definition of terms and how I'm going to use them for purposes of this presentation, not necessarily that these are the right terms for the industry. And so when I use DevOps, I'm going to be referring to the problem space, which is the releases and the infrastructure and the observability and all the rest that, that comes into that. And SRE is an engineering approach that's applying software engineering principles to the DevOps space. And what I call platform engineering is when you're building a product that is a reusable DevOps solution. And what are the purposes of a platform product? Benefits are usually expressed as efficiency, velocity, but there's something even more fundamental than that, which should be, in my opinion, the driving force from which everything else stems. And that's to empower product teams to choose their priorities. We don't want to force every product team to solve all their own DevOps problems. That's created many new problems for us. But we also don't want to keep them powerless and in the dark and not have ownership and insight into how uh, their products are powered. And product team priorities are often coerced and not as frequently by the customer as you might think. They're coerced by reliability issues, tooling issues, release issues, quality issues, and so on. This work is often unplanned. And that's what I mean when I say coerced. And it's difficult to plan for. And what our value proposition is, is we want to be able to free them from that chaotic, stormy weather, give them predictability, give them the ability to plan and choose where they focus. The more choices people have, the more effective they can be at their work. And now here's how platform and SRE teams usually get advocacy and funding. We have several teams all solving the same problems. Each shape represents a different DevOps problem, and each distinct shape has the same color, is the same size. Let's take one of these problems, solve it once, and now that's one less thing every team has to worry about. Magic. But you will find out, maybe quickly, maybe not so quickly, that reality usually isn't that simple. Actually, it tends to look a little bit more like this. Organizations that weren't born with platforms in their DNA are much more likely to look like this. For people with visual impairments, not only are the shapes here mutated and disjointed and rotated and shuffled, the colors have also been switched. And these are teams that have lots of little one-off services that they have, the way they're doing a particular technology differs slightly from how another team is doing it, and so on. But why does the world always look like this? Who can get it fixed? Who can impose standards? And how? Well, the problem is we perceive the technology and the way we did of those nice, even, consistent shapes in part because of how we view the org structure. It's structured, it's predictable, there's common leadership roots, and we tend to underestimate the diversity of the staff, the diversity and history of the products, the operational maturity of each, the priorities and focus across these teams, and that's a big mistake. And as an SRE organization, an organization made up of engineers who are never satisfied, we don't want to add value to just one team. We want to add value across the org. In fact, the nature of our technical mission requires us to drive impact horizontally. And that's the problem. Solving horizontal problems across diverse verticals is hard, especially if we're not being thoughtful about how the organization communicates and makes decisions. We can classify tech org's decision-making structure on a spectrum between fully federated and fully centralized. On one end of the spectrum, there are engineering verticals that act as autonomous and independent companies within a company. An example of this is at the New York Times, where the tech org is divided into missions, each with a mission head, responsible for their entire technical stack and prioritization. 
On the other, a small group of senior leaders makes priority choices affecting multiple verticals. An example of this is at Bees, where a small executive team determine what gets worked on and when across every vertical. Now, most companies will fall somewhere on this spectrum, and there are trade-offs to these approaches. What's important for you to know is what the fail state is. And the fail state is a mismatch between the platform approach and the decision-making structure. A highly centralized and prescriptive platform strategy is unlikely to work in a highly federated organization, and vice versa. But either way, staffing the SRE or platform teams is not enough to be effective and add value to the organization. To be effective, we need to be able to plug into every team, be inclusive of all of their diversity, and come up with a plan to serve them. And that's what I mean when I say cross-functional. We are a function integral to the team's success. We have to understand that platform adoption will require the product team to invest and their resources are already scarce. So where should you focus your efforts as SRE leaders? Well, here's the mistake most people make. They want to maximize the time spent on the technical and minimize the time spent everywhere else. But as you saw above, driving horizontal impact means driving organizational change. And as an SRE leader, I've spent the vast majority of my time working on communication strategies, channels, relationships, partnerships. My closest partners are program managers and other engineering leaders. We work together to do things like redo distribution lists, solve our Slack channels and evolve them, develop alerting mechanisms, create change management procedures and more. And that's one of the big reasons why my teams have been so successful. And so as you're thinking about how to spend your time and how to prioritize, I suggest about a third of your time be on the technical. You need to spend at least as much time on your communication and process with other teams, including them and what you're doing, being part of what they're doing, building those relationships because we need to build with our customers. We need to uh, earn their trust. We need to partner up with them. And if you're not spending time developing those relationships and building those communication muscles, no matter how great your technical is, you're not going to get that adoption. You're not going to get the buy-in. You're not going to be able to deliver that value to your customers. And so when it comes to the technical, there is this kind of classic chicken and egg. And it's, I want to build a platform so I can have standards, but I need standards in order to build a platform. So how do you solve for that? And the answer is, you just learn to get comfortable with duplication. We have to solve for standards by driving teams towards converging on a certain technology. We don't need to always say we're going to build one vault instance once that every team is going to use in the same way. Instead, it would be a win if today you have no secrets management and tomorrow you have 10 teams running 10 vault instances if it's in a mostly consistent way. Because you can always solve for the consolidation later. Now's the time when you probably expect me to share the correct org structure in order to solve all these problems, but I'm not going to do that. There's a whole universe of nuance on how to structure SRE at any company, and minor adjustments can have large repercussions. Instead, I'll share some principles, questions to ask yourselves, and areas to prioritize your efforts on. And I'll start with the principle that SRE is a part of a whole, not a whole unto itself. Do not try and create a logical separation, abstraction, contract, or interface between SRE and product teams. Operate as a molecule. Avoid viewing yourself as an independent and autonomous organization. It is better instead to view yourself as an extension of your partner teams and the rest of your org. SRE is service, and that means continuously delivering value. Do not get lost in the grandeur of your technical vision and despair if the vision feels cloudy or feels distant because we're here to deliver incremental and continuous value. As long as we're doing that, we're succeeding. Reaching the vision is great, but helping teams solve problems, that's our success metric. SRE is practical. Engage in whatever way works. Do not constrain your ways of working for efficiency's sake. Work in whatever way works best for your partners, whether that means an embed, a consulting, a short-term engagement, whatever it looks like, don't box yourself in. Work in whatever way works best with your partners. And lastly, SRE is dynamic. We need to build those hubs in the organization and instead smash the silos. Siloing is a natural organizational phenomenon, but it also prevents effective horizontal work by creating these uh, barriers between verticals. You can't do horizontal work, and that's what we're trying to enable. Now, some questions to ask yourself. How involved am I in the product team's planning and prioritization process? I venture to say, for most people, the answer is not very much. 
you're probably on the outside of it. Maybe you hear about it later. Maybe you give a little bit of feedback up front, but you're not an integral part of it. And that's a problem. Product and engineering and QA and design, we know now that they all want to be involved early in the product development process to build a better, more effective process and do that shift left. SRE needs to be the same way. So if you're not involved early and often in the planning and prioritization process, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to get the uh, delivery and gains uh, solving those DevOps problems that you're hoping for. When is the last time I delivered tangible value to my customer? Was it last week, last sprint, last month, six months ago, last year? Maybe never. And I can tell you, I've seen teams that have never delivered something tangible to their customers. You don't want to be in that situation. So ask yourself, have I delivered something recently for my customers? And if the answer is no, I suggest that you take a step back, reevaluate what your focus and your priorities are and deliver something tangible because that's why we're here. Am I advancing standards or am I being distracted by a need to deduplicate? We're so focused on efficiency and wanting to avoid reinventing the wheel. And we always feel like uh, if we just spend a little bit more time up front, we can avoid this deduplication. Don't do that. Your metric is advancing standards, not building that efficiency up front. It's the standards that's going to get you to where you need to go. And lastly, am I coping effectively with the trials of organizational change? Horizontal impact, organizational change, different in every company. Some places it's going to be feel so slow and painful and others it's going to move so fast. You think it's moving too fast and that's going to throw your planning off. It's going to throw your priorities off. It's going to throw you mentally off. And so be prepared in advance, be mindful, decide in advance, no, am I coping with the trials of organizational change? Because those changes, those growing pains, they can be painful and you need to be prepared for them. Now, talking a little bit about communication, as I mentioned, spending about a third of your time on communications and relationships, here's a bit of a blueprint, and I'm not going to go into detail, but these are a whole bunch of ideas and areas where you can focus on to build uh, more effectively with your product teams. And so a few categories, uh, public relations, that's your marketing. That's how you're getting a good word out there. That's how you're getting people talking, creating buzz about what you're building. There's outreach, which is connecting your own teams to other teams. There's peer-to-peer, -peer, which is the most important relationship in engineering teams, which is one engineer talking to another engineer. And the last is the self-serve, which is how are you empowering other teams to help themselves rather than you have to do everything for them. As you approach communication, you should be asking yourself, how much communication is enough? How do I communicate? How do I not communicate? What I often see is engineering leaders will ask themselves, am I communicating enough? And if that's you, stop, red light. I can immediately tell you, no, you're not. If you have to ask, you're not doing it. Um, now, we can raise that bar. We know that even if we were to communicate enough, enough is not enough. We need to over-communicate. And so now the next question is, am I over-communicating? Mm -hmm. Yellow light, it's a little bit better. Um, well, if your goal is to over-communicate, communication, again, it's so hard, you're going to fall short of your goal. You're not going to over-communicate. And so that's not the optimal question to ask. The optimal is to ask, am I communicating so much that my partners are telling me to slow down? Are they saying, stop communicating so much, you're annoying me. I can tell you that despite my greatest efforts over the last several years, I have yet to be in a position where somebody has come and told me, Pine, you're communicating too much, slow down, stop doing that. Um, and this is the goal that you want to reach. You want to be communicating so much. You want to try so hard. And communication is so difficult and requires so much resources. You want to keep going until people tell you to stop. Don't do the opposite, which is communicate the minimum. That's how you set yourself up for failure. I'll end on this note, uh, inspired by a, a quote from former President Kennedy. Ask not how the organization can fit into you ask how you can fit into the organization. The less flexible you are, the worse off you'll be. As leaders, we always wanna maximize our own team's efficiency, and that's natural, but SRE is service. And as servant leaders, we must prioritize maximizing partner team's efficiency first, and then improve our own efficiencies later. Do not force your partner teams to work on your terms, force yourself to work on your partner's terms. I hope this was a good use of time for you. I hope you learned something today. You're all amazing leaders. You're going to do amazing things. And I can't wait to hear about what you do. Thank you so much.